are the Novi's, the glorious front drive Novi's. The crowd loved them. They were V8 supercharged front drive and they were loud. And uh, they, they, uh, they break the track record, they'd be on the pole, they'd lead, and then something would happen. But there was a huge following for the Novi. They were about as popular as any driver in uh, the 1940s and 50s, and then in their later incarnation as, uh, as rear drives. There were two front drive cars. Uh, this was the second of the two. The first was in 1946, and they were owned by an industrialist named Lou Welsh, whose business was in a place called Novi, Michigan. Except that you have to be careful how you word this because it wasn't a town, it is now, but it's a city now, but it wasn't until 1958 that it even qualified as a village. It was just a place. And uh, folklore has it that there was a wooden toll uh, way, a wooden plank toll way that went from Detroit to Howell, which is about 30 miles. And before there were automobiles, you could get on this tollway uh, with your horse and cart. And uh, stop number six was designated by supposedly N-O period. And then the V and the one, the Roman numerals for six. And then the locals uh, eventually, um, uh, it, it became um, Novi although some of the locals say that that story is not true, but we like it. Anyway, that's where Lou Welsh's business was. And in 1938, he was at the track with cars and Ed Winfield, the engineer, had a straight eight engine uh, in the Bow Seal Fast Special. And on a rainy day, Welsh came in and he was interested in the engine and they got talking. And then uh, Welsh uh, said, well, you know, if money was no object, what would you build? And Ed Winfield said, well, I've had this idea for a V8 version of this straight eight and uh, supercharged. And he said, I think it would have all kinds of power. So Welsh said, well, let's just do it. And uh, Ed Winfield supposedly said, well, it would take a lot of money. You don't understand. It would be, take a lot of money. And uh, Lou Walsh apparently said, no, you don't understand. Let's do it. So finally in 1941, a, a Winfield V8 showed up in a Bosil Fast uh, Special. It was actually one of the 1935 uh, front drive uh, Miller Fords, and Ralph Hepburn finished fourth. Then uh, the war years came, and after the war, a car, the twin sister of this, appeared with Ralph Hepburn, and it just obliterated the track records. So uh, anyway, the, the run of the front drive Novice is uh, like this were from 1946 to 55. And the best finish was by the great Duke Nalon in this car. He finished third uh, in 1948. And there were problems along the way. He was the fastest qualifier. Ralph Hepburn lost his life in practice in the other car. Chet Miller got out of this one and said, I don't want to drive it for now. And so Duke got in, fastest qualifier, not on the pole. and. Uh, made uh, a pit stop at 101 laps, which took a while because it had a hundred, I think a 112 gallon tank. And then uh, late in the race, he was uh, uh, chasing Maury Rose and had to come in for an unscheduled second stop. And uh, they, they, then the, uh, it stalled, he lost time, but he still able, was, was able to salvage third place, which was the highest by a Novi. And uh, the, um, apparently what happened was that when they made the stop halfway, they thought the tank was full. They used pressurized refueling and so many areas, the aeration in the fuel, the air bubbles, if you like, uh, made it appear that, they, that, that it was full when it was not. And so as the, uh, the dude got out running in the race, it settled down and then uh, the, the level was lower than they had thought, and so he was obliged to come in for a second stop. Anyway, Duke was on the pole in 49 and 51 with this car. Um, it's the one that is in the movies, in, in so many uh, B-grade movies with a crash, with the car hits the wall and the wall of flame and cars driving through the, uh, 
through the flame. That was Duke Nayland's accident in 49 with this car. Uh, the car's final appearance was 1955. It was blue, it had bag wheels. Troy Rutman tried to qualify it and um, the car sat in that state for many years and then was eventually restored back to the way it was when, uh, when Duke drove it in 1948 to third. Anyway, there's so much more, but um, what a great story and the memories and, and what a pleasure to be able to spelt, spend time with Duke Nalon, who was just one of the great gentlemen who ever drove a race car.